so season number six. Successful for the Mariners as Adam Lallana took Grimsby to a Champions League spot and into an FA Cup final, which sadly we lost to Manchester City. And since that game, Adam Lallana has left us to go to Liverpool, which he agreed upon last season. As our assistant, Sean Pearson, is back before we get a manager and our budget is higher than ever. Yes, I seriously wasn't making that up. Welcome back to the Grimsby 2 glory. And yes, our team is glorious. A little hint at the kit, which we'll get onto in a moment. But 108 million, that is absolutely glorious. A new manager, of course. Well, yet to be appointed. As whilst I'm recording this, I haven't even put the poll out for the new manager. As you can see, we're still in the Premier League and into the Champions League. Does it show anything yet? No, the qualifying rounds which we don't have to go through. But before we get on to anything else, the kits, before we show you anything, and this home kit's a glorious one. More white than black, it's been freshened up a little bit. We've got the red little hints and the sponsor in red. Also, the back is my favorite part. Shout out to Billy who makes them. You can see very faintly the Docks Tower in Cleethorpes, where the Grimsby Stadium is, and I think you can see the tower from the top stand. I don't know that for sure, but absolutely glorious. As the next one is a beauty. It's a claret and blue number. Many teams in the Premier League have them. Got to be a little bit careful around West Ham and Burnley, I'm told. But yes, I absolutely love this kit. Really, really glorious. That pristine feel to it. As the goalkeeper kit as well. It's quite fun, this one. I'm going to call it the peacock look. Feathery circle slash bubbles. I just love it. And it's got the Spotify X MTOS sponsor. Absolutely glorious. And I love it even more looking at it through this view. And Jordan Pickford, 35 year olds. I'm not a big fan of that. But what I am a big fan of is we didn't do it last season, but John McAtee is going to an 87. As he won player of the season the year before last, and I haven't seen last year's votes because of course the time I'm recording this, but the upcoming poll, don't worry, I won't leave forever. I'll get it updated straight away, as we also give him finesse shots. He does cut inside and have a dig very often, as you can see, them stats, absolutely amazing. 91 pace, 88 shooting, and 90 dribbling. Fantastic from Maka. As he's clearly our best player now because of Pickford's downgrade, but will that be extended today being a Champs League team? And all that money we have has to be spent. And of course, Undav does leave. We do need a striker, but we do need to pay contracts because look at all these players. I'm actually going to do that first and then see how much money we have. As a new deal sparked by Pearson for Pickford, the goalkeeper, Matty Wolf, the centre-back, Doug Thorne, the captain, and also Dewsbury Hall. That's our most important players done. Now, you can see there is Casado, who I'm going to leave a moment because I don't know where I'm signing. I just knew the rest of the players have either been here from the start or they are amongst our highest rated. So we've still got 99 million. And the reason I didn't sign up, Marriott, Chow, Cowdery, Smith, Summers, it's because they may be replaced. And of course, we could sell them. But the first position we need is definitely a backup striker to replace the outgoing Undal. As I'm going to speak to Pearson about making these signings, I think I want to take control, knowing he's not the permanent. Pearson, I know all the good you've done, but I've got to say myself, I saw you do it in the lower divisions, and I've seen Lalana make signings. I know you was his assistant and I do trust your input, but I want to take control of who we bring in. A new manager is expected and a big manager at that. And whilst I've got a little bit of control over the club, I want to put the profit into sustainable players. And I want to make sure we pick the best for the club. As Pearson says, boss, you know I've always been loyal to this club. So if you feel that's best, you do you. Glad he sees where I'm coming from. As yes, let's go and get a striker. Let's not dwell no more because we've got to get a few players in today. And I want to find a player that's got similar stats to Undav and Mex Mirdink of Fortuna Citidad. Or Citad, he should only cost around 30 million. And I know that's a lot for a backup, but he's very good and quite young. So I'm going to offer 30 million. I don't care about that extra million. And they want you and Summers, so I don't want to swap out. Sorry, Fortuna, you're definitely not getting you winners. 31.8, 
I deem that acceptable. As here he is into the club, I just want to show him in the squad hub because he's so similar to Wundav. He's got strength, shooting, and a left foot. So he's going to sit on the bench, and I am very happy with that. But what do the fans think? One's turned to Twitter to say very optimistic, and another, well, doubts his UCL quality. I get that because he's obviously never played in it before, but we've got 64 million still left to spend. But my next thoughts are not immediately signing a player, but looking if any other clubs want to sign ours. As being in the Champions League should allow us to make better signings, but also other clubs will like our players that have played well. As a very good offer for Doug Tham. And I know he's aging, but I am going to keep him here. He's been here since day one. And Marius being good, they've offered a good player as well in that deal, but he's still 23. And I want around 30 million for him. Driving a hard bargain, I know. As Summers, again, 26 million maybe. But I just don't want to get rid of him. Then again, them to have rejected are probably the signings that we do need. I do want to strengthen up this bench. But we also need a fullback. Chowdhury not good enough. He's 31 years old. I'm going to let him run out of contract. But then I'm looking at our youngsters. Carlos Neves and also Ibrahim Bell. Also Cairns, 21 years old. Brilliant on the bench. As can any of these actually play right back. Carlos Neves can, but he's a left footer. I don't get it. I mean, I'll train him there and I'd love for him to actually be our bench right back. Give him the shot he deserves and loan out a few others. The likes of Shield and Rossi, who hasn't worked just yet. Also, Morris. And then this man, Yaki Gomez. Not doing an academy. Or do we do an academy? Let's do an academy. We've got to do an academy. Did I mention academy? I'm joking. I'm going to stop now as we're going to send our first scout. Let's look for a centre mid. That man in England. As the next one, I'm going to Egypt. I've never scouted in Africa before. And I'm going to look for a right wing. Think you know what I'm after there. As the last one, Argentina, a playmaker. Yep, I am looking for Messi and Salah. As have we gone and found them? No, but a decent keeper. is better than Shepard we've got, Adrian Garcia. So I'll go and promote him and then Cesar Guerrero. It's a better looking academy. It's just come too late into the save. But I'll loan list them all. Guerrero could do with a position swap and we could do with another signing. So let's go and look for one. As with our money being spread around, I am looking for bargains and a 79 rated right back, Ethan Laird. I know about Neves, but he's in his last year of contract, so he'd be around 10 million or just above 10 million. That's a big player to get for that money. And we do need more fullbacks. Let Casado move into the midfield permanently, so we'll offer 13 million. Accepted. Brilliant. Just what we wanted to hear. We're going to get Ethan Laird. We should get him for very cheap. What a steal, man. And what a back of a kid. Did you see that when he held it up, Laird? And then the docks tower beneath it. I do love that kit. And that's a brilliant deal. Love the player. And I do want to play more games today because of the Champions League. As how do we start the season? We've got Leicester and then Tottenham, who we did beat in the cup. And around that middle week is when our Champions League journey should be announced. And I definitely want to get onto that today. So let's get a move on. Very strong bench now and plus still 50 million. And I'm thinking just go away from bench and just go back to the first team. Where could we add a centre back? Matty and Farm. They're both, I believe, 29, knocking on the door of 30. As am I correct? Yeah, Matty Wolf, approached by Sociedad. I definitely won't be selling him. And Doug Tham, the same age. So, yeah, centre-back, I think. And actually, our new coach in charge, or our interim coach, used to be a centre-back. Pearson, it's time I actually do call upon your wisdom as i want another center back and i want your input where can we strengthen because i know we've got two loyal lads who i don't want to upset but i also want more quality as he says boss i think the best bet is to sign from another champs league club 
Because if you go and do that, it gives them a bit of understanding. If you're signing from a good team, they will understand they're a good player and probably still be upset, but not as upset as an upcoming one. And that's probably sound advice. So yes, them two are aging, but maybe we don't go for a young player, but an experienced one to add to them. Make them not, you know, feel too replaced. And Liverpool... You know where Adam Lallana just went to? Have plenty, and I mean plenty of good centre-backs. A lot of old boys, and I'm looking at Gabriel. Take an old player off their books, bring in a Brazilian, and of course we've got Neves training as right-back. He could go alongside him. And also, like bloody every player I sign, he's in his last year of contract, so 40 million should be good enough. And yes, that's accepted. As Why is Klopp in that office? Get out! Adam Lallana is in charge of Liverpool. Don't stand where he stands, as Harley Shield is going to be standing on the outside of the Grimsby door going to Royal Antwerp. Good luck to the man, as our Spanish goalkeeper Adrian Garcia to Preston. Good luck to him as well. Decided to keep Shepard here. As backup, as Andrea Rossi goes to Bristol City, who we're striking up a link with. Bit of a feeder club, if you ask me. As a Nyaki, Orlando City, 12 months. That's our fourth youth player out. But a player coming in. Gabriel is here, and I welcome him to Grimsby. What a big signing. Veteran of a player. And I'm not going to speak to the current centre-backs. I don't want to put them off. And what a signing. We need a Champions League quality, as he is left-footed, so it's Tham out the team, but he will remain the club captain. As that's how Grimsby looks. Absolutely unbelievable. I cannot believe we've got here, but now there's a condition. Players on the bench, even in the reserves, they're all accounted for, and we've got to buy to sell. We can't afford anyone. Four million left. It's enough for them current contracts that are expiring if those players do play well when given opportunities. Such as Carlos Neves, who's going to be a right back. No increase, which I thought he'd get, but still a viable option. He'll play there more regularly as Chowdhury. I'm probably going to transfer list him because... I don't see him as an option at all. Plenty of centre-back options as well. Only one left-back at the club, but I guess our right-back's well led. And Neves can play left-back. But for now, he's in the reserves. And I will make him first reserve, as that is the team. And the graphics have now changed as we begin our Premier League season with Leicester City first. And I am going to play them. As then afterwards, I'm going to take the risk of simming Spurs, simming Newcastle... Everton and then seeing our champs group. As here we are at the King Power, a brilliant first occasion, Leicester City in our claret and blue kit. I like it very pristine, like a burgundy red carpet. And I know that's two colours, but just let it work. I beg. As Jeldard got the tackling. And now Dewsbury Hall into Pizarro, who remains our starting striker, but has pressure of Meerdink, who can come on as Schmidt around the corner. And Pizarro to keep on running. Has he got anybody at the back post? He does, Dewsbury Hall. And it's in the back of the net. It's the ex-Leicester man who has taken the captain's armband. And how has that got in? I have no idea how, but it's a cross over the top and dinks under the keeper. What a bit of play and what a little goal. Very lucky as we're absolutely all over Leicester. We usually struggle in our first game, but we're not struggling at the King Power. It's Casado into Pizarro. It falls to Alex Scott and it's 2-0. Our ex-Bristol City wonder kid. We're trying to get the best out of him. He scores on opening day. Will this be another Champions League season for the Mariners? Or will it be even better? Because that is a class finish. Or a Leicester just really bad. Because we've not seen anything going forward from them. Apart from Jellard making a tackle. Dewsbury Hall. Not a bad effort as well. As Ilias always oh, away from Schmidt. Who's been a little bit rusty. But still... An incredible player. As did you see that recovery. Excellent. As he almost got to Nonto. But the halftime whistle goes. Very proud of our Mariners. And I'm thinking. Rotation's going to be huge this upcoming season. And with Tottenham next. I'm going to take Dewsbury Hall out. As he had no sharpness and all. As now Wolf into Jellert. Can we get that ball through the gap? What gap are we even looking for? Terrible, but still, they're my high standards going into it, as I think Schmidt's going to get booked in a minute, so I might actually put Laird on. He dived into a tackle, as still 
Maybe a chance, Casado dribbling with the ball. We're just holding on to it a little bit too long, but that is a brilliant ball. Pizarro, not the same though. Maybe Meerdinks comes on. In fact, I'm going to make that change. As could it be an instant impact? I don't know where Meerdinks is, but he should have come onto the field as we did just win a free kick. Alex Scott jumping towards it. Casado jumping onto it as that's a ball around the corner. Savage went for the big one, but Casado, a brilliant ball into McAtee, and now Savage across the goal, and it's a first touch goal for Meerdink. He's off the bench and straight amongst the numbers. Ethan Laird on his back. What an impact from those two. Maybe Laird the lesser, but what a ball from Savage. He could have easily gone to shoot, but 3-0 Grimsby. But we just carry on as a free kick for Leicester. They're very high up. Cucurella gets stealing. Here's Murdink on the run. The number 22's not got much pace on the 80, so he'll wait for his winger. Brilliant since he's come on. As McAtee into the middle. It's James into Casado. Casado over the top to McAtee. It's gone to the other side. And it's 4-0 to the Mariners. Will you get a better goal? I really don't know in terms of play. It's been brilliant. Just tiki-taka all over the field from Pearson's team. As he shakes hands with their manager, Stevie Cooper it should be, Jordan Pickford celebrates, and that's a glorious win. Puts us top of the league as we actually played the first game of the season. It must have been the Friday night kickoff, and I don't mind it. Give us more, please, Sky. Because they're the guys who arrange it, and look how funny this is. James McAtee from Liverpool plus Ezekiel Palacios. Very good player and very good money, but we all know very deep down, Adam Lallana doesn't like this guy. He didn't like me signing him. And lads, remember at the start of this save when we couldn't get a fit team for love, no money? This is our best team and it's fully fit for Spurs, which I'm going to see the result of. It's a 1-0 defeat, man. Last minute as well, Pizarro missing a spot kick. Quite angry about that because the Leicester game was so good but we move on to Newcastle next, who do have a point extra than us. Don't lose it, lads, don't lose it, as yes, a 2-1 win. Casado and James McAtee, I believe that is. And yes, it was James, I can check this way, I've been told, because John had an injury and I actually did take him out of the team for this one. But don't worry, he's straight back in, and he's still a little bit unfit, but the whole team is before Everton. Farm 84, Savage 84. Our bench play is getting better as Everton. Come on, can we beat the Toffees? Come on, only a draw. Beto and Pizarro with the opening goal, but still we lost the lead at home, dominating the fixture. Fans shouldn't be happy as yes, we are in fifth, but I'm not happy in myself. In fact, the only thing that could cheer me up is seeing our Champions League group this year as we've got Villarreal, Frankfurt, and Dynamo Zagreb.